Take note this morning as we journey on Tuesday's edition of Morning at NTV. Now we're going to be taking note on how to turn Uganda into a coffee powerhouse. The backbone of it is that Uganda in East Africa has ambitious plans to triple its coffee exports by 2030. But these hopes come with warnings that the country must adopt stringent food safety standards if it wants to access the Western markets. Uganda export exported 6.26 billion 60 kg bags of coffee valued at 862 million US dollars, the equivalent of 3.19 trillion Ugandan shillings, and this was between August 2021 and July 2022. Compared to the 6 million bags valued at 559 million US dollars for the same period in the previous 12 months, and this is according to the Uganda Coffee Development Authority. But farmers still continue to cry of little dividends from their produce. We traverse this dilemma of sustainable coffee growing here in Uganda uh, with the director of World Sustainability Organization all the way from Italy and his name is Paolo Bray. Good morning to you Paolo Bray. Good morning Priscilla, thank you for having me. Well thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, could you let us know uh, in your capacity World Sustainability Organization when it comes to coffee as the new cash uh, crop across the globe, what's the status of Africa compared to the rest of the world? Well, uh, uh, the major producers and uh, exporters of coffee worldwide are not in Africa. They are Brazil, uh, Vietnam, uh, Colombia, Indonesia, and, and by themselves, these uh, already cover almost uh, or over 50% of the total production. The next one uh, in, uh, in line is uh, Uganda, together with Ethiopia, depending on the season. So there's a, a lot of space for improvement, definitely. Okay, all right. Uh, recently, there was a coffee monopoly uh, debate that we were having here for us in Uganda. Uh, all to see that Uganda's coffee sector actually grows uh, to expectations. When it comes to Uganda's uh, status of coffee right now, what are the things that have perhaps moved us in a positive direction to then be a potential uh, market supplier? Well, I would say that uh, a lot of progress has already been made, uh, thanks also to the government's initiatives. Uh, of course, there's always space for improvement, but the, the current production is a record high of approximately 6.85 million 60 kilo bags, which is the unit that is used to measure the, 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 the production of coffee, uh, most of which is exported. Uh, the, the Uganda Coffee Development Authority, the UCDA, uh, which was set up in 1991, uh, in fact managed to increase production very well, moving Uganda from uh, 10th, approximately 10th producer worldwide to the current 6th or 5th, depending on the season. And uh, in 2015, the government uh, set itself uh, the goal of uh, basically increasing fivefold the production by 20, 2040. And uh, the last uh, season's harvest uh, shows that it has doubled in eight years since the beginning of this plan. So this suggests that the plan might actually work or at least uh, get very close to these objectives. And also in terms of quality, things have improved. Uh, and uh, while Uganda produces mainly a Robusta, uh, in, and which is considered normally a lower quality uh, production, uh, the recent uh, ranking uh, of the best uh, coffee in terms of taste and quality uh, turned out uh, Uganda to be the third best by certified coffee tasters. So that's also very good. And then there's other examples of uh, overall good management by the government together with the local businesses. Uh, when, for example, the government managed to um, um, fight the uh, coffee wilt disease, uh, introducing more resilient varieties. And also, uh, more recently, it set up nurseries with the goal of handing out uh, 300 million free coffee seedlings to the farmers across the country. So the, overall, there is a good management. We see very good efforts and successful by the government. Uh, of course, this, as I was saying, there's always space for improvement. And the aim now should be to maintain its uh, growth uh, to be environmentally and socially sustainable. 
Uh, Paolo, yesterday I had the privilege of looking at the Brazilian type of coffees that uh, one of the local growers has here in Uganda. Uh, it seems to take on a different way of planting and uh, being able to actually harvest it in the long run, uh, which is something that is very, very lucrative according to what they were saying. And so when you talk about the different coffee uh, types that are on the market, do we have a favorable climate and environment that uh, actually can be able to grow the different other coffees? coffees, for example, the ones that uh, come from Brazil, seeing that it has number one on the market? Well, it is a, a change that is, is possible, but is uh, highly unlikely, uh, uh, because this change uh, would imply also uh, different soil conditions and temperatures, etc. The main uh, difference uh, with uh, Brazil is the uh, farm size, the average farm size, which is 7.5 hectares in Brazil, and it's near to 0.2 hectares in Uganda. So that is really the main difference which uh, makes uh, competition uh, quite hard for your farmers. Uh, and, uh, and this is the reason why Brazil has managed to invest uh, a new capital to have better economies of scales, uh, which of course allow for many, many uh, good uh, initiatives to improve production and yields uh, and also the added value of, of the product. So the, the, the actual change that which could uh, make a difference in Uganda, uh, other from the government uh, involvement in uh, uh, supporting the farmers in general, would be to try and uh, uh, reach a stage where the average uh, um, farm in uh, size in terms of hectares would get uh, bigger and closer to the one in uh, Brazil, which uh, would allow for economies of scale and uh, investment uh, in uh, good practices in an easier way. Not that that is impossible right now, but it's more difficult. When we look at Uganda, we do have 1.2 to 1.7 million families in Uganda that actually actively participate in coffee growing. The, the point of it is to actually improve their household income and livelihood. However, the dividends on this coffee uh, perhaps may be rooting from what you have stated, uh, the 0 0.2 hectares that they get to do this coffee farming on is to the disadvantage of Uganda actually moving a notch higher in uh, tapping into the coffee markets. What needs to be revised then uh, to be able, one, to maintain the coreness of these uh, programs, uh, such as coffee growing, uh, to improve income, households, livelihoods, but also as a country to be able to position ourselves well? Well, the, the export of, of coffee in itself uh, and the, the money, uh, the revenue generated, uh, uh, which is quite a lot, we're talking about 875 million US dollars uh, last year, uh, most of it coming uh, from uh, the exports to Italy, Germany, US, Spain, and, and Morocco, uh, has, uh, has already had, uh, let's say, indirect benefits uh, for the population, as it has allowed uh, for investments in schools, hospitals, infrastructures. And uh, uh, the, the, as with other countries in the developing area of the world, the producers of raw materials obtain uh, normally and unfortunately a very small share of the total benefit, uh, also because uh, several players are in the middle, the traders, the processors, the exporters, the importers, the distributors, and so on. So this is uh, quite uh, normal. The, the, the way to go to... Uh, empower the, the, the farmers to have the farmers obtain a better share in all this is to, there are different ways. One of these is to uh, include them more in the global value chain, in um, uh, empower them by means of training and by means of uh, better practices uh, to provide added value for their product. And uh, because they cannot, uh, they cannot increase the production uh, um, in, in the small farms that they uh, are currently owning and managing. It's very difficult to increase further the yields. Uh, so they have to increase the value. And that's done through a process which, unfortunately, is not always so fast and, and, and immediate, uh, but it goes through the increase in uh, the improvement in the value of the product itself.
Okay. All right. Um, in that, then, how do we ensure that we have sustainability? Uh, for example, uh, we do grow the crop itself, but when it comes to value addition, we seem to have very uh, little push in that direction. Whereas on your side, on the global side, uh, there is a lot of opportunities. There's lots of companies that are now into value addition. Most recently, I use coffee in my scrub, in my body scrub. And so that means that coffee has the potential to become an addition of value to so many other things. How do we sure. get as a country and as a government, how can we then get our coffee and also do value addition from home ground here uh, so as to then tap into the other angles that are available of opportunity in the global market? Well, I was, as I was saying, we need to improve the value and that goes also to becoming more sustainable. Uh, in fact, while coffee farming in Uganda has played a crucial role in the country's economic development, it has also had a significant impact on the environment. And farmers have, have cleared large tracts of land, and this has resulted in the destruction of uh, important ecosystems, uh, soil erosion, loss of biodiversity, uh, and all this implies a, a cost, right, for the community or sometimes immediately for the farmers themselves. Because if you lose uh, soil because of erosion, you will have uh, lower yields in the future. So uh, also the excessive use of agrochemicals uh, uh, pose significant risk to the health of farmers and consumers. So it's important not only the revenue, but also the health and well-being of the farmers. And, and some of the waste generated uh, during the coffee processing, such as parchment, pulp, and wastewater can be harmful to the environment and then uh, and thus have a negative uh, um, return for the community. So there is a need for sustainable practices such as agroforestry, integrated pest management, eco-friendly waste management, and also training farmers on, uh, on best farming practices and thus empowering them to have autonomy over their farming practices and ensure long-term social environmental sustainability. So the government should provide the further support and incentives. It has done a lot in terms of improving the yields and uh, improving also the quality. Now it's the moment of improving the sustainability to encourage farmers to adopt these sustainable practices and educate them on the benefits of sustainable farming. Well, I've heard of sustainability certification. What is that about and how does it work and where is it applied in this whole conversation? Well, Priscilla, many, many of us in the general public and consumers uh, more specifically, are concerned about the impact that our consumption choices could, could have on the environment and on workers and our local communities. We would like to make responsible choices, but we are often overwhelmed by either the lack of information or the excess of sustainability claims that we find on our products, on the products on the shelves. So a reliable third-party product certification can help a lot in making responsible choices when buying a product or service. So this, this third party certification means that the sustainability claim has been verified by a qualified and independent uh, third party inspector uh, by means of an on-site audit carried out on a yearly basis. And this inspector itself is verified by government bodies every year. So there are very few certifications of this kind, which are also international in scope. And our organization, the World Sustainability Organization, has created Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth, which are among the very few third-party certifications. Friend of the Earth is for the certifications of products on sustainable agriculture and farming. And our Friend of the Earth Sustainable Coffee a certification checks compliance with several requirements, uh, which cover the whole spectrum of, of the potential environmental impacts of the production, uh, such as uh, protection of endangered and animal uh, or plant species which might occur on the agricultural site, the impact of the coffee agricultural site on previously uh, existing natural habitat, the use of integrated uh, uh, pest management practices appropriate to wastewater energy management, social accountability, so our workers and local communities are treated. And we also ask companies to give back to nature in a regenerative approach, for example, restoring degraded ecosystems. I believe this is the way to go. And we are here also to provide this uh, opportunity also to the local producers in uh, Uganda. Our certifications are more accessible compared to others, uh, which have already been accessed, for example, by the bigger farms in Brazil, etc. 
So we understand that there, there is limited capital for the producers to invest. And so since our mission is to promote sustainability and we are a nonprofit organization, we want to make our services available also to the small, small scale producers in Uganda. In that regard, then where do you find a Uganda in terms of uh, sustainability? And uh, I beg, I guess the question for me is where should we as a country currently put emphasis on doing the first sustainability program? Well, uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, other major coffee producers which with a bigger average size in the farm like like Brazil or Vietnam uh, managed uh, to invest uh, uh, earlier on on uh, these type of certifications uh, starting from the food safety to quality to sustainability uh, so there is a, a, a lot of work to be done also in Uganda in this sense but the government uh, has been very reactive uh, and uh, very successful on uh, other programs, uh, in particular, the increase in yields and quality, as I was mentioning. And so there is a reason to believe that uh, this is possible also in Uganda. Uh, we are here to um, support Uganda in this sense and, uh, and to turn it into a potential sustainability hub for Africa, not only for coffee, but also for cotton production, which is the first export that you have. We beg the question. For us here in Uganda, in, in all honesty, we are an agriculture-based country. Uh, we depend highly on agricultural commodities, and coffee, by and large, is constituting as a major source for foreign exchange for us. So it's imperative that the government and the farming community actually do prioritize sustainability in terms of coffee farming and production. How is the government responding to this call, however? Uh, the recommendations that you are giving as an organization on a global level, how is the government responding? receiving this and actually implementing it in uh, more or less real time? Well, the government has launched uh, some years ago a comprehensive national coffee policy uh, that defines uh, clear-cut interventions. Uh, and and uh, the, the policy is guided by principles and objectives uh, such as uh, uh, market liberalization, empowerment of farmers, uh, research in uh, coffee uh, production practices, uh, and also value addition, including uh, certification. I think uh, um, this is the area where uh, uh, we provide uh, our support in terms of sustainability certification. We have become a leading one in the seafood arena, and uh, also now we are growing uh, fast in the agriculture, uh, sustainable agriculture arena. So uh, we haven't had contacts yet uh, with the local government, but we have projects ongoing, for example, in Zambia, to turn Zambia into a major sustainability hub uh, for Africa, involving not only the coffee producers, but also uh, tobacco and uh, mining, uh, tourism, etc. So I believe the government uh, uh, should go for a, a more comprehensive uh, sustainability initiative uh, uh, which could cover all the different uh, uh, sectors uh, of course as you were rightly saying agriculture is the main one in uh, uganda uh, as this is the the approach which uh, would be most uh, effective and uh, in, and also provide a, a very strong uh, added value in terms of uh, image uh, for uganda on the international markets spoken more or less on the hopeful side and the positive side, but uh, from your assessment as a world organization, uh, in Uganda, where are we failing actually in terms of enhancing coffee sustainability and production? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a, let's say, a, a momentaneous uh, failing, hopefully, that will improve over time. Uh, I wouldn't uh, really point the finger on the government because it really has done uh, excellent things in terms of improving the productivity and also the quality. And uh, of course, this would have not been possible uh, without the support of the local businesses, uh, the processing, the trading and the farmers. And uh, 
it's a it's an international market so the input comes is coming also from uh, uh, your own customers uh, and uh, we are based in italy which is your uh, we are based as, as an organization in italy in milan even though we work globally which is your by far your number one uh, target market and and so uh, we can definitely uh, support uh, the farmers uh, and the government uh, with the joint initiatives which could involve also some of your major customers in uh, in Italy. And uh, I always believe, you know, in the market uh, forces together with the government support. Um, and so I think that would be the fastest way to improve, uh, to really set up the project, uh, putting together your customers in uh, Italy and also in other countries in Europe, but that's where we can play the strongest uh, um, uh, and most effective uh, um, uh, activity because um, we already um, we already participated. Our project and certification is already participated by several of the retail chains and major producers. And uh, through the market uh, force uh, and market drive, I think the change would be faster, and uh, uh, it would make sense. And I think it would re be really appreciated also by the. Uh, your end customers in uh, in Italy. Paolo, there's also been another argument uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the value chain, especially for the growers themselves. There's methodologies that we have been using traditionally that have actually worked in enhancing coffee production as a country, Uganda, with the environment that we have so favorable. Uh, these methodologies have worked. However, of course, you, with exposure, you might want to pick methodologies from Brazil and other countries that you have mentioned. Why not come and make me do study of these methodologies and improve them technological wise uh, than other uh, than these very same far farmers adopting something else well uh, there, there are some uh, uh, good sides and uh, sustainable practices in uh, both methodologies uh, you can be a small-scale producer and be sustainable uh, for certain aspects uh, and unsustainable on other impacts you know, uh, impact of production uh, is through many impact factors. Uh, you have an impact uh, when you, you are using uh, a, a natural habitat to develop your agricultural site, and, uh, and you can have an impact there. Uh, and then you can have a lower impact maybe in the, in the production methodology. Um, and so uh, one cannot generalize and say that bigger size equals to bigger impact, uh, uh, also because the yields uh, are improved in a bigger size, and so the uh, unit of production per unit of land is uh, higher. And so, seen from this point of view, it, it's normally as a lower impact. It uses less uh, resources, uh, water use and energy use is optimized. So. The, the, the point is uh, um, that uh, none of these can be um, seen as uh, definitely unsustainable or definitely sustainable. One has to uh, look into the detail of the production system and also on a case by case, because uh, uh, one company can be on the same land, uh, be more sustainable than the neighbor, neighboring uh, company, neighboring farm in terms of its practices. It can use, for example, more integrated pest management practices and uh, less uh, agrochemicals compared to the neighbor. So really that's where the certification uh, plays a very important role, uh, both in the preparation uh, process uh, and, and phase as well in, as in the certification itself, uh, because it will look on a case by case uh, using uh, um, parameters, sustainability standards and requirements, uh, which are the same for everybody, whether you are in Brazil or you are in uh, Ethiopia or you are in Uganda. And, uh, and so this plays a fair uh, uh, co comparative uh, analysis and assessment, uh, um, which uh, puts more balance in the international uh, market. Uh, so uh, really, I, I believe that um, that is uh, the way to go.
certification and uh, previous to that uh, a plan uh, to uh, improve the standards uh, to the best uh, international practices for the sector. If that is all applied for RCA in Uganda, uh, what's the potential that we have in, say, the next 24 months? In conclusion. Well, again, uh, from my experience, uh, I've seen that the best uh, projects are those that are market-driven, uh, with uh, maybe a little bit of support from the government in terms of coordination, not necessarily resources. Um, and uh, let's say the government endorses uh, the Friend of the Earth certification as Zambia is doing for its coffee production and brings this out uh, to the customers for their uh, endorsement too and approval and then uh, starts moving in that direction so that uh, the farmers will uh, understand the added value and will be supported also by their customers in, uh, and by the government uh, in uh, investing for the change. I would go in that direction uh, with uh, a market-driven project. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Paolo Bray, for joining us all the way from Italy. He's the director of World Sustainability Organization. And I believe that that conversation has definitely brought into perspective this sustainability impact uh, of ensuring that if applied to coffee, some of these elements can actually go a long way in boosting us as a country and also tapping into that uh, foreign exchange. Uh, as we come to the close of Morning at NTV, we do 